Today we're here doing part of our uh, recordings of the Legacy Project in the state of Alabama with the Alabama Bandmasters at Phi Beta Mu. And uh, we have with us today Randall Cohen, who's at the University of Alabama. And what he's going to do is talk about his career and uh, his life and band and tell us something about how to make things go better. Randall, it's good to see you. Thank good you. to see you, Jim. Thank you so much. Um, it's a little overwhelming to think about um, that anybody would watch a video um, and listen to me talk about my career. Um, because I've, I've always just tried to do the best for the students that I have to serve. And um, it, it's been wonderful and I hope it's not close to over yet. And I hope to, to, to be able to do this for several more years. Um, I grew up in a very small town uh, in North Alabama. Bluntsville, Alabama was my hometown. Went to J.B. Pennington High School. Um, same school my mom went to, same school my grandmother went to. Uh, so I became known as uh, Tootsie's Boy because my mom's nickname is Tootsie. And so uh, I was Tootsie's Boy through the whole school. Um, but uh, very thankful for that, that background and uh, just, you know, kind of salt of the earth people. Uh, and uh, I was very fortunate that band started when I was in seventh grade there and uh, had a wonderful teacher uh, that started the band program in that community, uh, Bill Brenza. And um, also, I have to mention, uh, in addition to my band director, I had a wonderful choral director. Uh, it was very rare that a, a school that small would have both a band director and a choir director, but we did. And uh, the choral director there, uh, Kathy Bazarth, was a huge influence on me as well. Um, but I had a normal band experience, um, I guess, uh, as most people would have in high school and um, decided pretty early on that I either wanted to be a band director or a gas station attendant. And uh, I thought a gas station attendant was neat because you got, they always had a little change machine on their belt, if you're old enough to remember those things. And, and they got to wear a uniform. I liked the uniform, you know. So it was that or, or a band director. So uh, I, I guess the music thing eventually, uh, eventually won out. And uh, after I graduated from Pennington High School, uh, uh, went to undergrad school for four years at Jacksonville State University. I uh, was in uh, pretty, pretty much everything you could do music-wise there in the concert program and of course the marching band. Uh, and um, was very fortunate to uh, have auditioned and, and, and get a spot in the acapella choir uh, at Jacksonville State. And I mention that because uh, I, I think a lot of what I am as a musician, uh, I learned from my time from, from four years of singing in the acapella choir uh, with Bane Dobbins. Uh, Mr. Dobbins was also my undergrad conducting teacher, and uh, he had a, a really big impact on me as a musician uh, and as a conductor uh, as well. Um, he was, you know, very strict, and a lot of times I didn't like what he, <laughs> how he ran things, and uh, he didn't always agree with him, uh, especially at the time. But now, uh, as a lot of years have uh, gone by, and I look back on that time, and uh, it w it, I was very fortunate. And uh, of course, with Dr. Walters running the band program there, uh, not a more kind and gentle soul the way he treated his students. And, uh, you know, it's just, a, a, I was very fortunate. And I think fortunate is a word that I come back to a lot. I, when I graduated from Jacksonville, I was fortunate to, uh, I, I knew I wanted to try to move to a little bit bigger community. Um, and so I chose Atlanta, which is a pretty big community, and uh, was again very lucky to my first job. Uh, as I was an assistant band director at Morrow High School, which is in Clayton County, uh, and I was an assistant. The head director there was a guy named Larry Ballman, and uh, also David Gregory was the band director at Forest Park High School, which was in that county. Uh, Cecil Wilder was the band director at Jonesboro High School uh, in that same school system. Bill Swore was the band director at North Clayton High School in that same school system. So here I was, this young person, just graduated from Jacksonville, knew everything there was to know about being a band director. Of course, I didn't need to need any of this help. And uh, I learned very quickly that I didn't know anything from those people. And you know, those names, uh, if you search the band director world from you know, the, the 70s, the 60s, the 70s, and the 80s, those are the names that come up all the time. Bill Swore, uh, 
even though we taught uh, in the same school system, not in the same school. Um, but one of the most amazing teachers I have ever watched work. And I was fortunate to be there to be able to watch those people work, to go to their rehearsals, watch them rehearse uh, a band, watch them uh, deal with students, and, and just expose me to some of the concert band literature that I was never exposed to either in high school or college. So uh, very fortunate to spend that time and learning from those people and building those relationships that I still stay in touch with those people to this day, it's almost 40 years after that point. Um, but, you know, kind of established uh, myself in the state of Georgia, which I had not, it was not part of the plan at all to move to Georgia, but that's where the job was and, and uh, ended up staying in that state for 25 years, uh, teaching high school and middle school band at a couple of different schools. Um, was very fortunate to be uh, encouraged to be involved in our professional organizations. Uh, early on in my career because of those people I was surrounded with were involved and I thought that was what we were supposed to do. Um, joining the National Band Association, uh, being very active at, in the Georgia Music Educators Association and the, the band division there and uh, seeing those people that uh, I looked up to being a member of Five BMU and thinking that would be really cool someday if that were to happen to me and just piquing that interest to find out more about the organization and what it was about. Um, so, I, you know, like I said, I, I spent 25 years teaching there, um, served in just about every office the Georgia Music Educators have. Um, first vice president, I was the band division chair and eventually president of GMEA. Um, and feel very strongly about giving back to our profession in that way. Um, and of course, I've stayed active with the National Band Association through all those years. Uh, being state chairman and, uh, and, and now finishing up a two-year term as national second vice president. Uh, so I think it's very important and uh, uh, bringing us back to Phi Beta Mu, uh, was very, very blessed and honored that uh, David Gregory was my sponsor in Phi Beta Mu uh, in Georgia. And then when I moved to Alabama in 2007, of course, uh, transferred my membership to, uh, to our chapter here in Alabama. So just been a, a very meaningful part of my career. Um, at the end of uh, my 25th year teaching in Georgia, uh, I began thinking about retirement because in Georgia, um, the full teacher retirement is 30 years. And so I'm like, well, I could stay here five more years, absolutely, and retire and fade off into the sunset. But I always had this kind of urge in the back of my head, well, maybe I want to do the college thing to try to teach young teachers how to be teachers. And so I, you know, We'll give it a shot. I probably won't get a job. I don't have a doctorate. I'm too old to go back and start that now. It's just not going to happen. But, you know, we'll see. And long story short, it came to be and was offered the job at the University of Alabama, which growing up, uh, I, I, I said I didn't go to Alabama as an undergrad, but I was always a huge Alabama fan uh, to the point of carpeting in my room was crimson and white shag carpeting in the 70s. And my wall was, you know, Bear Bryant was everywhere in my room. Uh, I can remember being elated uh, at the victories and, and just devastated at losses at bowl games and, and things like that. So, uh, you know, when I was offered the position at the University of Alabama, it was just like, this is not real. Uh, so uh, moved back to Alabama in 2007 and uh, as the associate director at the University of Alabama. And, um, you know, it's just been a whirlwind that same year in 2007 is when Nick Saban became the football coach there. So. Uh, it, it has been a pretty wild ride for 13 years. I can't believe it's been 13 years. Um, but now it, it, it's a great point for me to be able to um, work with students in our graduate conducting program. Uh, I'm just finishing or in the middle of a second year of uh, being uh, the primary teachers for two students who are getting their doctorate in wind conducting and getting to work with them very closely about the profession and, and teaching and conducting and all that is just uh, it's just been a real honor for me to be a part of it. So here we are. Here we are. So, thoughts about how you, you did a great clinic this morning. And uh, you may want to include a little bit of what you talked about there. Uh, thoughts about things for young band directors. Uh, things that you remember, of course, you came in in some really good bands. Mm -hmm. As you said, some really powerful people there with you. And they mm -hmm. knew what they were doing. Great, great, all of them. Uh, things that might help these young, 
young folks that's coming into the field because many of them, they don't get touched by people that's been, been there and done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think um, one of the, the sad things for me at this point is there's been 13 years since I've been in a high school or middle school classroom of my own. Right. Um, and I'm the type of, of person that I'm willing, I will go to anybody's rehearsal. Doesn't matter who, where, if somebody asks me, I'm there. Uh, I'm not the kind of person that just knocks on the door and says, here I am. Um, so what happens in the classroom now is 13 years separation. There's been a lot of change in 13 years. And, and I'm very aware of that. And um, I, a lot of what the current teachers are having to deal with, I only have to imagine what it would be like because it was different 13 years ago. Uh, I, I think it's a lot more difficult now than it was 13 years ago because of uh, the advancements in our, our society a lot of times have made teachers' jobs more difficult um, and different for sure. But um, the three topics that were addressed this morning in the 5 a.m. session um, were ethics, BAM parents, BAM booster club, and dealing with your administration, which are three topics that are a challenge and you know so much of that well hardly any of that actually none of that has anything to do with standing on the podium and directing a band and telling your clarinets how to finger be natural or you know saxophones have you know what, what's going on there uh, and and I think that's uh, was one of the things that as a young teacher was difficult for me to understand that so little of the time you actually spend doing what you went to school to learn how to do and I think as, as a college teacher now, I get to spend more time doing that. So that's, that's, a, that's a good thing. Um, but I think when you, when you start talking about ethics, and uh, it, it's one of those things where you have to maintain your integrity uh, as a teacher, uh, as a human being, as a person, uh, because you are a role model to those students in your classroom, in the school, and in the community. And uh, your integrity is something that if something happens to it in a negative way, it's very, very difficult to get it back uh, in a positive light. So, you know, just doing the right things and, um, you know, not stepping into those, uh, those traps that, um, you know, a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of teachers do um, is, is something that's critical. Um, and then the, the band parent thing, um, you have to have their help. It, it's, a, it, it's a community running a band program these days. No matter if, if you are the band director at Brookwood Middle School or if you're the band director at Hoover High School, um, you have to have the parent support and the parent help. And it's different depending on your community, but you still have to have it. And I think it's important that we learn how to work with those parents and find the parents that that are better at certain jobs and get them in that job or in that role of assisting. Anytime uh, you cannot deal with money as a teacher is a great thing. Uh, and either have your school bookkeeper or your, your band parent treasurer deal with all of that stuff. Um, and uh, just the organizational things of moving equipment, setting up for a concert, uh, uniform inventory, music library inventory, even instrument inventory to a certain degree, you know, you could have band parents helping with those things. So I, you know, I, I think finding what is the norm for your community, working with your administrator to find out what he or she wants in, in that community relative to, to band support groups or parent support groups uh, and, and working within those, uh, those guidelines. Uh, and then working with your administration, I, I was very blessed. I taught at a, a lot of different schools. Um, and, and had principals and administrators, some better than others, but uh, I never really had what I thought was a bad administrator. Um, I think one of the things that teachers have to remember, young teachers especially, is you're not only educating your students about uh, ensemble sound and how to march in a straight line and what is eight to five and how do you play in tune, but you're also uh, educating the band parents on their role in that process. And then you're also educating your administrators and their role in that process. Um, because I, I have found that most administrators, if they're a principal or a superintendent, they understand the positive, uh, 
public relations that they get from a really quality band program, music program, and they want that. A lot of times they just don't know how to get there because they, they don't have uh, that in their background. And I, I, I find it a double-edged sword when a lot of good band directors decide to go into administration. I'm sad on one hand in that they're not teaching our students anymore, but I'm happy on the other hand in that those people are now in those kind of positions where uh, they can make bigger decisions and, and affect more students and more teachers. So, you know, you hate to lose them in the classroom, but you, you gain a, a really, um, uh, you know, just a, a worldly leader, which, which a lot of times helps. Um, a, a quick kind of odd story about an administrator, um, probably the one that, that was most involved in what we did in a good way was actually the last principal that I had in the last high school that I taught. When I interviewed for the, for the job at Milton High School, uh, I knew things were different, number one, because literally that interview process was uh, more involved in more layers than when I interviewed at the University of Alabama. Uh, and uh, was a parent committee, of, interviewed the students, conducted the band, uh, talked to the art teacher, talked to the choir director, and you know, it was just all these layers. And, talking to the assistant principal who was in charge of the interview process, and she was like, yeah, and we want you to play your trumpet. And I'm like, okay, um, you know, I've been a teacher for 20 years, and now you know, I'm not really, you know, I can make a sound on it, but I'm, uh, I'm not ready to give a half an hour recital. Well, we want you to play your trumpet. And I said, and I'm like, okay, can I ask you a question? Well, sure. When you hire a basketball coach, do you have him go out and shoot a few hoops? When you hire a football coach, do you have them go run a few plays? She was like, well, no. I'm like, okay, that's kind of the same. You know, so I didn't have to play my trumpet for them or I probably wouldn't have gotten the job. Uh, but uh, after getting that job and, and uh, having my first sit down with the principal, when I walked into his office, I knew something was different because there was chamber music playing over his stereo system in his office. And uh, he told me a little bit about himself, and he was in his second year at the school, and he had moved from Edina High School, uh, which is a suburb of St. Paul, Minnesota. And he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying my time here. The weather's much better than Minnesota. He said, but I really am sad that I had to give up my subscription to the St. Paul Chamber Orchestra concerts. And I'm like, okay, this is different. <laughs> this is not like every other principal I've had. And, and the other thing, he, in that conversation, he was like, you know, I know about this Midwest Band and Orchestra Clinic. He said, when I was president, uh, when I was principal of Ann Arbor Huron High School in Ann Arbor, Michigan, before Edina, uh, a gentleman named John Whitwell was my high school band director there. And uh, I was the principal when John took that band to Midwest. And, I, and I'd like to do that again. That was a really good trip. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is way different. <laughs> this is way different. Uh, but... A wonderful, wonderful man, uh, and the thing about him was everything was important. Uh, the football team was important, but no more important than the band, and certainly no more important than the academics that were happening in school. Um, so it was a fantastic school, and he, he was a wonderful administrator simply because he had that well-rounded background, and he wanted everything to be first class and top-notch. So, you know, I was very fortunate uh, in that respect, and then I've had those that, you know, like a lot of principals who were in athletics, were involved as a coach, and moved up and, and became principal, and, you know, again, some wonderful administrators but just didn't really understand the workings of a music program and how it was different because their perspective was totally just the marching band thing that happened at the football game. And uh, so, you know, I've had those administrators that, and some of those I've even had their, their children in the band program. And uh, so I, you just have to realize that you're educating them a lot of the time in what it is that we do. And while you may not get, you know, kind of the things that you want first, then Take that as I've got to do a better job of educating them on why that's important. And if it's important to the, to the growth of the program and there's a way they can do it, i found in most cases they will eventually do it. So I, I think those three topics in the clinic this morning were, were critical for you know, any teachers. And I've had, had uh, folks afterwards, even veteran teachers, say, I knew that stuff, but it was always good to hear it uh, reviewed. And, and you know, as a young teacher, I think uh, all those things that... Uh, we talked about were, were very important to young teachers.
What about some of your former students? Some maybe a memory or two. Um, or what, the, they're, what they're doing now, or what they did. It's you know. um, a lot of the, in the ethics component this morning. Social media came up, of course, because it's such a, a thing that, that teachers have to deal with now. And while there's a lot of negative things about social media, and a lot of times I hate it, and I'm not that good at dealing with social media. But the great thing about Facebook is being able to stay in touch with your former students. And I think uh, that has been the blessing for me about Facebook because, you know, when you look at over 38 years in, in the classroom, that's a lot of students. And, uh, you know, when, you, when you're able to reconnect with those students, um, it, it's just very special. Um, I, I think the thing, I'm, I'm incredibly proud of their successes and there's a wide range of students that have been successful in whatever field. And of course, the, the ones that have chosen music is, is you know, those are special. Uh, I, I was thinking the other day, I have three former students uh, uh, of my high school students uh, who are now professors of clarinet at three different universities in the country. Uh, and I have several students who were band directors, and a lot of them who are band directors, a couple of college band directors. Um, and, you know, I have uh, one student in, in particular that's always been very special, this, uh, an architect, and was just a, one of the most outstanding architects in Atlanta. Uh, and, and, you know, I have students who are now working as an agent in the CIA, I think. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, they're just successful, and, you know, when you talk to them and they're like, you know, I remember this performance, or I remember that competition, or I remember this trip, and, uh, you know, I might not have realized it then, and, and I think the ones that, you know, stand out to me are maybe the ones that weren't the ideal band student, the ones that kind of gave you a little bit of a rub every now and then of, you know, you got to make sure they're staying in line. Uh, one in particular, uh, not a, um, wasn't a, a bad student or mean person, was just, you know, like, like to test the boundaries. An amazing clarinet player. Phenomenal clarinet player. Uh, and uh, eventually graduated from high school, got a performance degree as a clarinet student, and is now sitting in the president's own Marine Band. And came back to visit us at Alabama a few weeks ago, came into my office, and he's like, you know, Mr. C, I need to apologize for what a bad high school band student I was. And he said, I realize that now. <laughs> I'm like, man, you're sitting in the Marine Band. You, you're in D.C. playing the Marine Band. Said, yeah, but I wouldn't be there if it had been for what we learned at high school band. So no matter what they choose to do, if, if there's been a little impact of, you know, being on time, taking care of your responsibilities, um, you know, anything that, that they learn in the program relative to that is, is great. Well, we appreciate your thoughts. I think this will be great for, for all band directors to look at uh, what you've had to say, because sometimes they don't get a chance at a convention like this. Y'all just meet in the hallway, but right. this way you've heard, heard about your career. And uh, as you said, during your, what you were saying, that you're always there. And uh, it's not hard to find your telephone number right. on, the, on the Million Dollar Band <laughs> website and call you. And, and, Absolutely. And, uh, of course, uh, in Pi Beta View, that's one of the things that we're supposed to do is go help folks. Mm -hmm. So we appreciate your, your work and your time. I didn't realize you and I came back to Alabama the same year. Yeah. Uh, that was 2007 when yeah. I went back, too. And just on a side note, uh, I went to Bluntsville Elementary <laughs> School, so we, we figured that out. And we, uh, yeah. we chatted a lot about our fourth grade teacher, who was very special <laughs> in both of our lives. Yeah. And so uh, it's good to have you with us today, and I uh, appreciate uh, the things you're doing, and uh, I guess roll tide. There we go, roll tide. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah.